Are you? I'm good, and you? Yeah, so we uh, so we're gonna get some very competitive legacy today. So we have the two, what I was kind of say the two best performing players from the last year challenges. I kept track of all the data, all the challenge data, uh, and I had like two categories. So the the winner of the first uh, category, which was like the most top eights, is JPA ninety three, which I'm sure everyone knows. Uh, <laughs> 36 x twos, um, and the guy is a machine. Played 400 and almost 470 matches with a 60% win rate. Uh, mostly sneak and show, as you can see. Uh, but, you know, Jonathan's played a little bit of everything. So that's the first. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. And then the other contender is B New, um, which he he won the category of kind of the highest win rate. So uh, he only played 53 matches, but had like almost 80% win rate, which is insane. Um, and uh, yeah, so so B New has been playing mostly Reanimator, Animator Painter, and Death Shadow is kind of the deck. Uh, and it, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be interesting because so the way this works is they both have registered two decks and they haven't told each other. It's a closed deck list. Uh, they only told me, so so I can control it that the, they don't cheat. Uh, and they can only play with the deck until they lose with it. And when once they've lost two times, they, they're out. Um, so it's going to be quite interesting because historically, if you if you think Binu, to say he, like what's going on in, in his mind like he probably knows he will play against sneak and show once uh, and i could imagine that reanimator used to be pretty good against sneak and show but at the same time jonathan can just pack like fill his sideboard sneak and show sideboard with the uh, ley lines right whatever so it's going to be interesting to see what the mind games that goes on there cool um, okay cool but yeah um, also, think, yeah. thank you, thank you so much. I think uh, I had like a little bit of audio issue, but I think it should be good to go now. Um, like Binu, I think I've, oh, I've, I've probably never really like won against Binu. I think in in any like oh, man, challenge or, um, I don't know, like a random league or something. <laughs> I don't think I've ever won against Jonathan when he played Sneak and Show. Yeah, like yeah, maybe once. Lance Definitely. versus Sneak and Show is like a pretty one-sided oh dude 100 percent. <laughs> you know what's interesting to me is that like both players with such a high win rate they both picked mm -hmm. um their signature deck is like a combo deck right it's uh yeah. like sneak and show for jpa that's and it's japan, reanimator yeah. for binu and that's yeah. kind of that's not really what you might expect from um from you know like from players like these but where because Delva has been the quote unquote best deck in the format for such a long time. I don't know about the um, about legacy or like the, the Delva decks right now because a lot of things have changed, but combo decks have always their like up and down moments, right? In, in legacy, like sometimes they're insane and sometimes they're actually there. It's actually kind of like a, a pain to, to play with them because, like, especially now where you see a lot of like griefs and reanimates, and that's yeah. certainly not what you want to see if you're on the sneak control side of things. And reanimator can also be tough sometimes, right? Like when people play too many copies of Endurance, um, yeah. Sogard Lanterns, that sort of jazz. Yeah, I'm. To uh, yeah, I, I see. I see. I see what you. I mean, 
um, I think Delver has been weaker than than ever, but at the same time, I can definitely see that this scam deck, the, like the blue black scam deck, must be so good against combo. If they play reanimate themselves, dude, the deck is insane. <laughs> deck is insane. Yeah. Like, <laughs> dude, I'm I'm just gonna get your Atroxa. easy peasy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> must be tough. Yeah, but should we let them let them? Uh, Challenge each other and Dude, see. Dude, I'm I'm ready. High level I'm absolutely ready. ready. Let's go on. Okay, let me. Let's uh, do it. We are ready. <laughs> All right. Also, thank you so much for everyone for tuning in. This was like kind of like short notice, but maybe you've seen on on Twitter. Ali posted it, and uh, we also have some cool prizes on the line. We have some alterations to go away for, for both players, right? So um, there's not going to be like a winner and a loser. It's going to be like both winners, but the one is like a better winner, basically, <laughs> so to speak. But because yeah. these are literally the, the two best legacy players on Magic Online, you know, you can't really go better than that, right? So they're the, yeah, they're the best performing for last from last year, for sure. Perfect. So, so we have, and the winner is going to win like a super sweet, the one copy of the One Ring, Oops. altered by by a great artist from Berlin. Boom! They got it. I got it live on screen, you guys. Check this out. It's gonna be the One Ring, and it's a Slot of Legacy trophy number one. And this is the second one. This is the Org. This is the Org Army token. The, the, the second prize also says Slot of Legacy. Nice. And so uh, it's the follow up. So um, yeah. All right. So we are in. Can you see this? Can you see the game? Perfect. I can see everything. Perfect. Let's go. Let's go. So let's. Uh... It seems like Jonathan won the die roll. Mm hmm. So unfortunately, we're not going to be. Yeah, good to go. Good to go. We're not going to be able to see any of the players' hands because we had technical problems. <laughs> we tried for like half an hour to set it up. Uh, so it will be like watching. It will be quite interesting, I see. I think so. We'll be watching without knowing uh, what they draw. I mean, like, do, do you remember like the, the super old um, cover system from Star City Games? Like, sometimes even in those uh, paper tournaments, we're not able to to really see anything, see. Um, nice. any of the hands. Like, the, the commentators were always guessing, right? Like, oh, is is that like a brainstorm? Yeah, that's pretty cool. And is that like a fetch land in their hand? <laughs> <laughs> so, kind of like a guessing game the whole time, but yeah, let's see. We are good to go, so let's see. So, speaking about guessing, what do you think Jonathan plays in the first round? Ooh, it's a tough one. I think, like, if both players submitted two decks for this uh, showdown, I think if I was JP, I would probably submit the non Sneak and Show deck because it's so obvious. Yeah. Like, Sneak and Show is such an obvious deck, right, for him, that mm. I think that Binu might think that JPA is on Sneak and Show, so I would probably sidestep that completely and play something completely different. In the first game yeah yeah especially if binu is gonna start with reanimator you don't want to start with sneak and show probably. oh yeah 100 percent. that uh, might be rough i mean i've seen games where sneak and show can actually pull something off but it's not it's not a good place to be that being no. said jpa uh is on the play here oh so flooded strand uh, okay Bo, 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 bo. This can be anything. Uh, it kind of looks like Sneak and Show sneak to and me, show. almost. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's almost like, you know, Sneak and Show against lands. You would fetch a basic. Uh huh, uh huh. Wait until turn three and then just kill me. Yeah. Let's see what Binu then if he wins on turn one. Okay. Okay, and there was... money on sneak. Yeah, it also uh, didn't shuffle with the pawn there. Nice. It's like the... <laughs> I would have almost already conceded. If I were the opponent here. <laughs> shuffle, not ponder. Okay, that's a concede, yeah. Let's... Uh... So... He plays a foil. Which seems uh, nice. So, did you know? I uh, I tried to get my uh, speaking about altars. I tried to get my life from the loans altered into uh, 
old frame. Oh my goodness. Like the the, yeah. the OG ones from, from Ravnica or they had like so many different no, no. platform blooms. Uh uh like the the you know the one the crow, the one with the graveyard. Oh shit, yeah, 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 yeah. I have so I tried to get those altered into old border. Oh my goodness, dude. Uh but then the guy that I spoke with he like we almost agreed everything in the price and everything, but then he uh he he realized I didn't want them foil. I and see. He said he couldn't do it. He could I only see. do it if, if they become foil. Which yeah. Is, yeah. It's annoying. I mean, you got a lot of new toys, right, for your land deck, like the the Tessian stage, which also came out in in like retro foil, uh, retro uh, borders, and it, it came out retro now, right? Yeah. In this set, I think. Yeah. Oh shoot! Is oh, this? Wow. Wait, hold on. Is it, this? This must be reanimated. Is this reanimated versus Sneak and Show? Could be. Oh yeah. Oh, it my could God. be. <laughs> Oh god. That's fantastic. That's rough. I guess like, like I mean it's pretty I mean, likely it, it's pretty likely, right? For um for those two decks. But like that being said, yeah. it, it, it it can still be some maybe some scam deck with but then like why do why do you fetch for a swamp? Oh, wow, it took the course away. <laughs> yeah. So it's like the worst. And they just take your that means Jonathan's hand couldn't have like a combo, the combo or anything because. But it's interesting because you know back in the day, if you cast Show and Tell against a reanimated deck, you would just lose, right? Because they put in Gristlebrand, draw 14 cards, and then you're dead. But now they don't play Gristlebrand. Right, but maybe now if like Jonathan puts in Emrakul, Binu puts in Atraxa. Not certain that Binu will win. Yeah, but then there are also like things like uh, Archon of um, Cruelty. That yeah, card is a true. that card is oh a stinker. God. That card is a yeah. stinker. Yeah. That's just, yeah, just that's... that's just not okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, tell me about it. Do you know how many married lists have died to that thing? Oh, dude. And the, wor the worst thing is when like uh, yes, either either they like attack, you discard a card, then you. And just to die, you, you, you summon, you, just not to die, you summon your Merit Lich, you block. And they reanimate it again. Stack, <laughs> you have to stack your... And the worst thing is it gains them, gains them life. Mm -hmm. Like, a couple of, like, sometimes I just wait until their end of... So they attack, I discard a card, I wait to end of turn, I make the Merit Lich, I attack, and they are like 23. Oh, dude, yeah, that's... So then that's... they go to 3, and then they attack again. I it is relevant, again. right? Like... Ah. Dude, like yeah. they would have played Arcade of Cruelty if it even if it didn't have the life gain thing. Even if there was no yeah. life gain involved, they would still play a creature because that creature is yeah. so good by itself, yeah. right? But then they have, but it's 2023, you know, and and, and Magic the Gathering cards just get so powerful sometimes that yeah. you just, you know, you just get like that extra bonus on top. Check yeah. this out, like turn one yeah. thought is into turn to grief. It's yeah, almost like a Delver. This is almost like a Delver start, like a Death Shadow yeah. start. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God! It takes another Force of Will. What's going on? Okay, and JPA reveals Dress Down, Tundra, Ponder, and Strict Proctor. The Warlock of Magic. Oh wow! You can see what. Yeah. You, oh, it's not oh, you you can see it in the game lock. Uh, oh, on, on, on the, okay. On the right. Okay, so it's uh, it's not Sneak and Show. It's some sort of blue white deck. Oh my god. Is this like an anti reanimated deck? It could be. So uh, could could you could you read out what what our strict proctor says? Because I don't think many people are familiar with this card. It's like a it's like an anti card with Whenever a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability to trigger, counter that ability unless its controller pays two. Oh my god. So what does that mean? Well, I guess for you it would mean that if you cast Tatas Oracle and don't have two mana, you, you <laughs> don't do it. <anything. laughs> you want me to spend an extra Dark Ritual on it, but you know what's, what? You know what's interesting is that like I I want to see if JPA plays some some creatures in his deck that also have like um basically drawback ETB triggers, right? Yeah, like for it example, must, like must have right, like um, Farvex and Dreadnought is like one of them. Yeah, I would guess so because it's also can... dressed down. Oh yeah, good call, good call. Eater. What about Euro? Eater what about days. Euro? 
because if you play euro you don't have to stack it right oh uh, no you don't have to you don't have to basically any any titan yeah you, you don't have to stack but you also don't get the etb trigger like the good one right like where you draw and put a land into play oh you that's skip, true you skip that too and unless you, you pay two mana you can you can only pay for the good one and oh, just yeah, ignore the true. bad one yeah, or, or do like me, pay for the bad one. <laughs> pay two mana and then sack it. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, Alright, so... I guess uh, Strict Proctor stops Archon, right? <laughs> it does, yeah. The ETB, it, uh, it. at least. Yeah. It has oh attacked. Stifle? That's an aggressive Stifle. To be honest, wouldn't it be... Better to stifle the draw seven? No, 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 no. Like I kind of, I kind of like stifling the the fetch land. Like it could have, it could have yeah, uh, gone for a bad lands maybe, like like a non-black source. Mm. It's possible. Jonathan has three cards in hand, and do we know them? Uh, yeah. So re he revealed a dra a dress down earlier. Yeah, so we definitely know about the dress down in his hand. And I think that's the only card we know. I think it will be rough. If this Grizzle Brand comes into play, it will be really. Because, you know, old school Grizzle Brand doesn't care about Strict Proctor at all. Yeah. No, you're right. Sorry. You're right. I think they are like the Strict Proctor, like, basically, like. Basically there to target Atroxa, right? Like Atroxa and I guess oh, the yeah, that's... Right, like those kind of things. Yeah. There oh comes. my goodness. Yeah. This will... Uh... I mean, I don't know. I I feel like when I... Um... When you look at stats, Reanimator is always like a 50-50 deck. Uh-huh. But... The good players, they always crush with it. Like, <laughs> I feel like there is, there is some, like, and also when I, I know when I, like, when I get paired against some of these reanimated masters, I'm like, oh no. It's like they always have, you can see this game even, it was, it's not like a turn one kill. Oh, wow. Damn, there is okay, a sort of power share. Jonathan, Jonathan is a master, man. So dress down in response, Grizzlebrand can't do anything, and then... Yeah. Damn, that, that was probably like the cleanest answer you can have to a Grizzlebrand. Like to a resolved Grizzlebrand, basically. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I thought the game was over. Yeah, that was, was like, that, okay, was, that was pretty over. good. However, though, um, that Grief, like, with, especially because of Manis, he, yeah. like, he has JP on, on the 14 clock now, and... Uh, yeah, yeah. It's getting a little bit annoying. <laughs> I think Menace is such is the the new goblin that also has Menace. It's like it's so annoying. It's like like what I don't like with the ability is that it's like just forces you to play one sided, like solitaire. Right? Yeah, kind of. It, in, in, I mean, it's blocks. So the only I, thing you can do is to attack. Yeah, it's it's kind of like flying, but better. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, oh my God, here's another one. Oh, Not dude. the first Grizzlebrand that heals you. Okay. Yeah, dude, this is rough. This is really rough. But I... I kind of saw it coming, honestly, because, yeah. like, of how, how brutal a reanimator is before sideboarding. Like, there's yeah. no graveyard hate in JPA deck, right? Like, in, in, at least in the main deck. Like, it's, oh. it's, it's kind of a fair blue... Oh, it's an, a fair band color deck. And, um... Man, that reanimator, it, it just it just crushes people like, yeah. you know, in pre-war games. Must have the highest turn one win rate of all decks. Right. Must have. I think maybe oops all spells. Alright, there comes another grief. And Binu can probably pay for it. Oh, so he can pay. Let's see if he pays for the good one or the bad one. <laughs> It's gonna be hard to see, actually. Yeah, it's it's kind of it's kind of easy to to screw up here. 
But I guess Jonathan is pretty dead. I can see, like, maybe. Wow! Take it back again. But yeah, but this gr grief stays in play, right? So. Like Terminus? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you have two creatures with manas, and then you have the troll which has super manas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and this will do it for the first game. Yeah. Wow. That's kind of cool because it started a bit slow, taking the the discarding two two force of wills, and then it just boom boom action action action. And Jonathan had some answers, but it was not enough. Yeah, totally. I was also like us thinking that Jonathan was on sneak and show until turn yeah, yeah. two or three. <laughs> yeah. Because it kind of looked like it, it right? Commentate, com commentating without looking at the hands. I think it's hard. Yeah. Hard, but it's also more fun, I think. No, like, Maybe like not J for the watchers, seriously, well. like, like JPA, like he purposely went Flooded Strand into Basic Island in a three color deck. Like he could have also gone like Tundra Ponder, but he opted to go Island yeah. Ponder. To bait, maybe yeah. to hide his deck archetype, maybe for like a turn or two. That's possible. Yeah, possible. Yeah, but yeah, because he didn't know that he was playing against Reanimator, right? Right. So, because I guess if you, oh, you, know, you play against the deck with infinite discard, you like hiding is maybe not the most. Yeah, it was it was interesting. Do you think we have to? Um... Go out and go in again? No. Return to game. Don't think so, right? Because we... I think while they sideboard, we... As soon as... I hope as soon as they start game 2, we will just be in, it, in that, so we don't... Don't get stuck in game 1 forever. <laughs> I mean, I can watch... The, I can watch the screen for hours. It looks good to <laughs> yeah, me. me too. It looks good to yeah. me. And they're like... You can... It's like, you know, pick your pick your poison, right? Like, do you, I don't want to get smashed by this gigantic troll of cards of doom, or do you want to get yeah. smashed by two greaves? Like, you pick the poison. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's interesting how, how many cards there are in common between Scam and Reanimator, I think. Yeah, dude, like it's, if you, it's technically the same deck at this point, right? Yeah. And, you know, like, hmm? do you know uh, Hans Jacob? Uh, I think... Um, yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, so he, uh, like, over a year ago, like, before Troll was printed, he, he played this, grief, like, Fair Bug, Grief Reanimator deck here in Denmark. Um, and this was kind of before it became cool, so it was before Lord of the Rings set. Uh, and I spoke with him and said, maybe you should, like, side sideboard into Reanimator. Because he, he had, like, a few Reanimates main. But, uh, yeah, I don't think he ever... Try that tech. But it, it would probably be better to cyber out of reanimator. Start as a re reanimator deck and then play as a scam deck if you could. Oh, that yeah, that that's not too bad. Yeah, like in that case, it's you red, you, red, black one. Yeah, you might wanna it's maybe like you wanna uh, you might wanna try like a Demir reanimator deck. You know, without fatal mm -hmm. looting, but careful study maybe. Mm -hmm. Uh, cause there, there's there's always been a blue black reanimator in Legacy, right? Like the Especially yeah. the, the early ones, uh, before Faithless Student got printed, I think. Um, and I don't even know what why, like, when it switched from blue-black to, bl to black-red. But, um, like, the, the old careful study, Force of Will Days reanimator yeah, yeah, decks, yeah, they, they, yeah, were, yeah. they were brutal. They were so good at killing under combo decks. Yeah, yeah. yeah because they had Days, Force of Will, <laughs> and were faster. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, so, what do you think... Jonathan brings in, I guess, yes, a lot of the graveyard aid. What do you think B News plan? Oh so, my god. <laughs> the plan is to win on turn one. I mean, there's obviously, yeah. like, obviously, you can, you, can, you can go, like, yeah, maybe there are, like, some um, Veil of Summers or some oh, um, surgical nice. extractions, you know, that sort of Veil stuff. Veil of Summer, nice. But uh, I could definitely also see some uh, containment priests, you know, coming in. Jonathan's um, deck, uh, they're particularly good against also stuff like Cephalic Breakfast, you know, in addition to mm -hmm. things like Show and Tell or Reanimator. They're kind of like really versatile. 
And I think if I'm not mistaken, it can also stop cards like Moxus from the Turbo Goblin stack. Or at least, um, you know, it stops the, yeah. the creature right to, to come in. Mm. So they only have a 6 mana 6-6. Six, six. Yeah. Okay, so the whale... What happened there? Inu cast Thoughtseize and then decided not to... Not to gristle, not to reanimate. Yeah, he he went for the um. That's kind of interesting, right? Like I I don't I don't know what like if he had the reanimate. I didn't cast it. Yeah. Yeah. Why didn't he cast it? Because now you open up yourself to trees. Yeah, and like days is not a problem here. Like there was on, only a so savanna. Now it is a problem. Yeah. yeah. Now it could be. Or, or Binus just simply didn't have the reanimate and he, crazy, he, yeah. he just wanted to cast Thoughties and Entomb on the same turn and hopefully top deck a land, you know, so he can cast maybe like an animate that or Exhume maybe. But, can, but then why can't you just cast Thoughties then? Like, it, not waste the darker children casting. Oh wow. Oh my god. I hate when this happens. You know how yeah. many like stupid things I've killed with with attacking into both. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling I'm telling you like attacking these days is not yeah. allowed. Like if you really want to attack, it better be a merit lage, dude. I'm telling you, it better be something yeah. big that doesn't get stomped by yeah. Oakish Bow Masters. Uh, like so many times I had like a two-two construct or something, and you know, I'm thinking there, yeah, I might as well just attack, and then oh, they they can. <laughs> yeah, this is this is insane. Like, yeah, if, if JPA has a sort of plowshare, he has, he kind of has to go for it. Yeah. But then, like, you know, like, w like, what do you kill, right? Like, do you kill the Orcish Bowmaster, and then they still have the Orc army? The the army is gonna trade with the um yeah, you, with the container. Double block here. I would double block here. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. Nice. 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 Because otherwise, you. Uh... Open yourself up to torch flashers. So now, great, great, great. Thanks for the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You still cast it there, right? Or, or no, 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 no. You don't, of course. Yeah, you, I think you let it happen. Tony Scaponi, thank you so much for the raid and welcome everyone who just joined. I'm here with Ali from N on NTG Online, and uh, we are watching JPA versus BNU. Um, the two most successful legacy players on Magic Online 2023 and we have them in a direct challenge to see who is the, the true Lord of Legacy 2023. Alright, welcome everyone and uh, this is game number two. Game one. Uh, so game number two, match number one. Perfect, perfect. So when we're playing and Jonathan plays some sort of... Uh, bug. <laughs> what we've seen so far is like counter spells and uh, two mana white creatures and rest down. Mm -hmm. But we suspect this might be some stif like some. Um, we also thought stifles, but probably dreadnought and and Euro. I mean, wow, 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 wow. No, okay. Dude, I think like JPA, no. he, he he came prepared. He means business. Yeah, he came he, prepared. He, he yeah. came prepared. So I think, <laughs> I don't want to know what his sideboard looks like, but this is so much stuff. Like Containment Priest, Veil of Summer, Surgical Extraction. Like all these are sideboard cards, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is the problem when you're like a graveyard specialist uh, in these type of tournaments. Because I remember like Ooh. many years ago, I was in a similar one where, where like... Some people were told they had to play dredge and everyone knew it and it was like 30 percent of the fields were reanimating dredge because there were so few players so it's just like people just came with so much hate yeah um i mean dude i wouldn't be too surprised if our uh, jpa also has like a couple of leyland of the voids in addition you know yeah. <laughs> yeah. i mean but look at this right like so we have we have jpa with three cards in hand Four lands in play. Binu is completely out of gas, has zero cards in hand, yeah. and has a stacked graveyard. Honestly, there is still a lot of 
good draws, being you no, can no. pull off yeah. here. Um, yeah, so JP kind of needs like a, a, a something, right? Like a, a clock or something, maybe like a plane yeah. smoker. Um, like dress down into a dreadnought would be Euro, really nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and be any crit, like, because Inu is a 20 life, so it's. Another priest coming down here? No. Also, let's, let's imagine, like, if you had Containment Priest, let's say the JPA has the Containment Priest. Do you play the Containment mm -hmm. Priest out now, or do you wait until Binu goes for a reani reanimation spell, right? Well, I guess it depends on your hand as well. If you... Well, I don't know, actually. Like... Because if you play it out too yeah, early and start attacking, you know, we, we saw what happened, right? Like Yeah, exactly. You don't want to do that, no. I would probably not do it. There's no no point in doing it, I think. Like it, it's it's like yeah, it's kind of similar to like a card like um, Opposition Agent. But people always yeah. like, yeah, they tend to keep Opposition in hand for these like gotcha moments, right? Where mm. opponent cracks a fetch land and they go, oh, Opposition Agent in response. Mm. But sometimes it's I don't know it, it it's it's so difficult because like sometimes you also want to close out the game early and um, it's still a delve of secrets right in, in, in terms of power stats. So uh yeah, I think opposition agent agent you should play out because also if they draw a fetch land, you can't respond to them playing the fetch land with opposition agent. So um uh, you can I mean of course. So if they, if what I mean, if they just play a fetch, and it becomes really awkward, you can't cast your opposition agent because then they will just fetch. Right, right. Uh, and the clock is faster as well. So I think with priest, you like, uh, you can always cast it in response to them trying to reanimate. Like you, and you're not gonna attack with it because you don't want to let it die to to a bow master so i think with a priest you should just keep it in but i don't know and now oh wow okay so this, this is, is end step end step dress down oh yeah so un untap euro oh so this is no. this is like the very infamous uh i'm gonna get you a moment right like we're gonna see some we're gonna see some buster creatures in a few moments okay, i now, now now we see the combo cards yeah oh, boom wow. let's go <laughs> I nice. mean, this is this is why we all came here tonight to uh to see good old good old Forest and Dreadnought from all the way yeah. from from Mirage. Like this card is like what like twenty five years old, I think at this point. It's yeah. a super old Magic card. And uh, I wonder when people realized that they could cheat with it because Typhoon was is pretty old as well, right? Yeah, it's, I don't even I, like I don't even know what what they were thinking when they printed Forest and Dreadnought because there was no way to cheat him into play. They've, they've probably thought like, hey, you know, it's going to be a lot of fun. You know, people are going to sacrifice a lot of creatures. That's going to be fun. That's going to be fun for them. Right? And then they get there like is, this. There is, there, isn't there a card from like uh, Alpha that like Illusionary Mask or something, the Illusions Mask or that let you put down a creature under it and then like morph it up? <laughs> I wonder if that works. Oh, that sounds really janky to me, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. I mean, magic was a lot different back then, so uh, <laughs> yeah. it's not too unreasonable. So I suspect the Binu has nothing that can kill a Dreadnought. Yeah, I don't Bowman, think so. Bowman's... I don't think so. Yeah, this is like a super, super hot clock, and uh, Okish Bowmasters not doing it. This guy has trample, so uh, <laughs> yeah. this game is gonna be like. Su kind of over relatively soon and JPS has been has been keeping up like five mana for like two or three turns I think mm. at this point and like this is heavily heavily uh, like signalizing the um the hot cost fossil will right potentially yeah that was kind of interesting because B knew with Hellbent and Jonathan had like what three cards in hand and then all of a sudden they both were like it seemed like nothing happened and then they all had f full hands so i guess there was a lot of turns for oh my god 
Stifle the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that isn't Just bad. Like that. Dude, or like, I, I gotta say, especially since this is game number two, um, J like, JPA has such a... is so likely to win this game, right? I would do everything oh. to hide my hand at this point. Uh, maybe JPA has some other secret something in, you know, some card in his hand mm. that he doesn't want to show. Um, so like this is this is yeah. actually not a bad play by any means. Oh no, for sure. Yeah, because you don't want to show your cyborg card. And did we like we, we have seen a lot of cyborg cards already. Like so, like multiple yeah. surgical extractions, containment priest, veil of summer, like those are all bangers in this in this matchup. And veil of summer yeah. especially it's like a card you like you might you might think that it's it's kind of just an okay card versus reanimator because it doesn't stop the reanimator thing but mm -hmm. the, the truth is that the the how reanimator decks attack you is discard and discard only and yeah. let's say like if, if they have a gristle brand in play if they if they can't discard any of your cards like you can actually untap and have a have a, have a safe turn where you can basically do whatever the hell you want so mm -hmm. um like veil of summer is, is, is somewhat of like a like a teferi's protection kind of kind of vibe to it yeah. you know yeah and i also think that jonathan built the cyber pretty clever so it's like permanent base it's like pure of course already had had uh, like counter spells and whatnot and you put in like permanent based hate and um veil of summers to protect this and like and the surgical, so I think it's, uh, it's kind of interesting that even though if Binu had been on the play in this game, it might have looked totally different. Because it seemed like he had a pretty busted hand, like Dark Ritual, Thoughtseize, and, and, and Tomb. Yeah, totally, totally. And that will do it. That will do it for game number two. When, when you, if you're in the reanimated side and you see this kind of game too, what do you, do you try to go for like a fair plan? Because it seems like, uh, I don't think Binu plays uh, show and tell. Yeah, this is rough. Maybe, um, maybe it does. So, so would you go like, but I guess, but void walkers and stuff but i don't think i don't think void walkers does anything against jonathan's so I'm, like when i look at sideboards from reanimator it's either they have like the show and tell plan or they have have like a lot of creatures like so they can go a bit more fair yeah i think it's i think it's rough right like after seeing so yeah. many surgicals and containment priests especially like you 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 kind of want to abandon the the reanimator plan maybe to some extent and, and play like a, a sub a plan b um mm -hmm. game but that being said though like even if you want to um, rush out those uh doughty void walkers and orcish bow masters there are still those angry phyrexian dreadnoughts right and phyrexian dreadnought comes yeah. down as early as turn three or maybe it's as early as turn two actually turn two. with stifle yeah. Yeah. so um yeah it is tough, man. Like, Doughty Voidwalker might just not be fast enough. No, I don't think so either. Like, now and, that I'm looking like, at this, yeah. you know, like, in, in game number one, I thought, well, you know, Beanie probably has this, like, figure it out. But this second game, dude, JPA crushed him. Like, it <laughs> yeah, was, it was he, dude, it was... <laughs> knock, knock out, yeah. Seriously. Like, he had the board... Um, completely managed with his 12-12 trample. He had a lot of counter magic. Surgicals were there. The Containment Priest was there. <laughs> um, even Wastelands. He didn't even need it, the Wastelands, but... It, this... His, yeah. Like, his Bantec has it all, really. And I think yeah. the, the biggest challenge yeah. for Beanie is, is gonna be, like, like where is the sweet spot, right? Like, where... It has JPA, like, a, a super aggressive start with, like, a quick... Uh, Frex and Dreadnought, well, because that means that maybe he has fewer copies of Surgical in hand, or maybe not as many counter spells, right? And JPA is also gonna decide if he wants to go like aggressive Ooh, with Dreadnought, or if he was, wants to go like control ish. Jonathan Mull, six. Oh, there is the Void Walker. 
and then Thotis. Because actually, Void Walker Thotis is also like a game plan. Sometimes. Oh, totally, totally. Uh, but I guess you can't you can't take like a Dreadnought with Void Walker, right? Uh, yeah, and, that, like, I mean, that doesn't, really, that doesn't do much. No. And in fact, I don't even know if there is a single card in JPA's deck that you want to take. Oh, no. Right? I, actually, to, to be honest, I think JPA's deck is pretty good against Reanimator. <laughs> also, the Strict Proctor, I don't... Maybe... Oh, do you think... I mean, it, I mean this is already so good because, like, now... Binu had like all his griefs, for example, they cost extra two mana. Um, yeah. Now comes the big. Do you think he has a euro or a. Oh. Yeah, we haven't even seen Uro yet. And I don't even know if Uro is still in the deck after sideboarding because Uro oh, doesn't not. really doesn't do much versus Reanimator. No. And especially not versus Doughty Voidwalker. <laughs> Oh wow, 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 wow. That's an aggressive force of will. Wow. So. Ah, okay. The, the, the dream. The other thing. Yeah. Why do you think he forced the Bowmaster? Like. It's tough. <laughs> it, it's tough. Like, it. I, it this possible seems kind of aggressive, and yeah. es especially with like if that, that that that's a weird part, right? Like if Jonathan knew about Ferox and Dreadnought coming down as a twelve twelve, right? And he like mm -hmm. he basically doesn't care about the Orc Spellmaster and the Orc Army tokens. Maybe he didn't know. Maybe maybe he found Dreadnought with Ponder. Cause ah, so so maybe his hand was like. Had a lot of interaction but no removal and then he was afraid you know that he would get run run over by creatures yeah possible or force, force the bowmaster and then uh, and then found the dreadnought because i agree if you, if you know you have a 12 to trample mm. you don't care about two, you just don't care yeah you, you you literally don't care <laughs> And here's also the the thing about Doughty Void Voker, right? Like it, it's pretty aggressive, but it can't it literally can't block. Um it can only block other creatures with shadow and uh I don't know, there are not many creatures in Legacy that well, have that's shadow. True. I think the last time we saw a creature with shadow was probably cast, like twenty years ago. Cast a ponder then, I assume. Yeah. Cast Ponder. So what's Vinu? What is looking for? Like and and Tomb. I guess if he can get like um, Archon into play, I guess that would be. That wouldn't actually work, right? Because. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's not. Yeah, I guess th th this game kind of showed how uh, weak the Voidwalker sidestepping plan is against this deck. Right, right. Like, yeah, we quickly touched on that, like during sideboarding. Yeah. But like against any common control deck, that's probably oh, wow. not a problem. But yeah, ag cool. against a deck that can technically go like turn two, I got a, a twelve twelve trample dreadnought. Yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm pretty sure that Jonathan signed up with this deck for uh, knowing that he would play against Reanimator. Really nice, yeah, dude, and it takes it away. Wow, yeah. So let's, uh, uh, yeah, let's go out of this. And then, so what's happened now is Binu has to play his other deck. Uh, one sec, let me write and go again. Dude, I'm so excited about Binu's second deck. I don't. Like my guesses are like so. What, yeah. did you, what did you show me? I think you um you show like, um painter was also one of his secondary decks. Yeah. So bef like if you look at the last year he played painter, scam I think, uh, and reanimator. 
Um, so let's, yeah, I'm also pretty excited to see what he brings for the second match here. And Jonathan has to play the same deck, right? So if you if you win, you have to stick with what what you were on. Gotcha. So you keep you keep playing basically. Yes. Okay. Do, do you want uh, so, yeah ready. yeah um yeah a, a lot of people jumped into the stream like just now do you want to quickly explain how this all tournament works ali yeah so the way it works is that we uh, or i kept track of all the results online challenge results from 2013 2023 sorry <laughs> um and i picked the two best performing players uh, which was jpa 93 um, he, he had the most top eights in, uh, in challenges last year. It was amazing, 17 top eights. Um, that's the first finalist. The second finalist is Pinu, who has the highest win rate uh, in, in in online challenges last year. Almost 80% win rate. <laughs> that's crazy, dude. Uh, that is crazy, yeah. Let me see. And, and then they were both allowed to register two decks. It's closed deck list, so no one knows, not even us. Uh, well, I guess I know the deck names because they have sent sent it to me, but I haven't I haven't looked. Um, and um, is this the one? I think they started the. All right, perfect. Uh, uh, yeah. Now we're writing now... match two. Jonathan is on the same deck, which is the Stifle Dreadnought. And Binu looks like Grixis Delver, maybe, or...? Yeah, this could be, this could be a Delver deck. Rick Proctor comes. The, <laughs> the new Legacy Stable, and this is a foil copy as well. So. So oh, for foil yeah, so for everyone who doesn't know, this is, this is the 2 mana 1-3. Um, from the Strixhaven set, it has flying and it says like whenever a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability to trigger, counter that unless the controller pays two colorless mana, right? And so yeah. it is kind of like a, a hate bear of some sort, right? Because a lot of creatures in Legacy yeah. have ETB triggers. A lot of the a lot of the creatures in um, Initiative, for example, Initiative decks or Death and Taxes, or um, yeah, like almost in any legacy decks, like creatures have ETB yeah. effects and you can, can stop there. But in addition to that, you also take some advantage because you play a couple of creatures in your deck named Frex and Dreadnought. And those guys have heavily, are heavily like downsided on their abilities just because they're so overpowered for just a, a single mana. Uh, so it's kind of like a, it's kind of oh like, like, like a two for one effect. So, Kai, can I ask you, this is a deck with main deck Torpor Orb. <laughs> so how would you have dude like, I, i'm just so ha i'm just so happy that i did not enter this tournament um <laughs> because like my signature deck is doomsday and i would have probably like lost like an hour ago entirely <laughs> <laughs> oh my god main deck torpor that's that's saying something i mean why not initiative was pretty popular as well but actually, I think something I like about Legacy now is that since since the printing of this new Goblin, Bro, Bro, what's it called? Bro beat something, or, you know, the new three mana oh, Goblin, the... Menace? Oh, the, uh, God damn it! a uh, Broadside Bombardiers. Yeah, Broadside Bomb. Since the printing of that, the Ancient Tomb players have stopped playing uh, Initiative. It's just like Red Prison and this Turbo Muxus. Yep, They're totally. So popular totally. Yeah. Like Broadside Bombardier is, is just so good at taking the initiative, right? Like if you go, yeah. if you play like a Case of Chaos Adventurer and say go, and your opponent goes like Broadside Bombardier and you know, like just kill your <laughs> dude and, and hit you for, I yeah. don't know, trillion damage and take the initiative, that's just, yeah. that's just lights out. Yeah, the card is good. Oh, let's see. Yep, definitely uh, not bad. So one sec, because my uh, I have a package coming from in the mail, so I'll be back in one minute, okay? Sounds good to me. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, I will uh, I will shit talk a little bit about Twelve Four maybe, and uh, why this card is just not a good magic card. All right, everyone, please stop playing this card. It, it's a mess. It's a messed up card. Uh. 
But I'd, I'd seen like so many, so many crazy situations, especially in our local legacy groups and um, at our paper tournament events in Berlin. You know, where, well, I saw like Cradlehoof Behemoth getting like no trigger because of Torpo Orb. You know, like, it went like this crazy. Oh damn! Are we really fighting over this Torpo Orb? What is? <laughs> Because if Binyu is on a Delver deck, oh yeah, okay. If so, if Binyu is on a Grixis Delver deck, and Grixis Delver does not care about Topo Orb at all, right? It does ha just doesn't have any creatures with ETB effects except Oakish Bowl Master. And but JPA might be holding a Fraxton Dreadnought here, which eh, watch, you know. I start to really like JPA's deck for some reason. Like if you if you're a magic boomer, um, and I will definitely call myself as one of those boomers, you will you will love this deck. You know, Phy Phyrex and Dreadnought is such an is such an old school card. Um, like when I got into Legacy, like many many years ago, um, like around 2010 or so, um, that guy was still around. Like people played that, people played it alongside Counterbalance and Sensei's Dividing Top, Stifle. That sort of stuff, you know. There was no dress down back then, and um, it was one of the most popular decks, and it was crazy strong. And also, it looks pretty cool. Like you can't deny, Phyrex and Dreadnought has some of the old, like the oldest and coolest artworks ever. Um, I think by Pete Venters, iconic, really iconic. I think most of most of the time you see it in like other formats, such as like Commander maybe or Pre Modern. I'm not even sure on Pre Modern, but. It's definitely legal, I think, in that format. Yeah, man. Like, this Dreadnought's gonna get ya. It's gonna get ya. The Beanie needs a... A what? I don't even know what Beanie needs here. Like, uh... How many how many outs do you have for a Phyrexian Dreadnought in a Grixis Delver deck? Oh shit, Stephanot is the tier one deck in pre-modern. Oops. Uh oh. Okay. Like I guess like cards like Brazen Borrower maybe. Or Molten Collapse. But yeah, man, JPA takes it away. He takes it away. All right. Damn. Oh, okay, I'm back. Miss yeah, dude. Oh, I missed everything. <laughs> you, you just saw, we saw like the craziest action. Seriously, like that Topo Orb had a crazy, we had a crazy counter fight over this one. Like we had, um, yeah, like fours so and daisies. And uh, that Frex and Dreadnought, you know, just, just hit the table. And man, like, I gotta tell you, this Grixis, Grixis Delver deck, not prepared to deal with a 12-12. Tw uh, like, the, the oh removal yeah, the removal spells in Grixis Delver are just not ready for this. No. <laughs> Jonathan um, won a monster, so he won without actually playing the signature deck. He didn't get to see any sneak and show action. He just kept it in, in the back pocket. Oh, you just don't need it. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, exactly. I guess you just don't need it. Wait, right, that was, was this like? Wasn't this like game number one? This was game. Oh, this was game number one. Yeah, so I think All they're right. gonna they're gonna go on with uh with some sideboarding here. Got it. Roger that. So okay, so it's, Jonathan is in a pretty upper hand. So one match one, and one game one, uh, of round two. So, I guess Grixis Delver, they do have an answer to Dreadnought, right? They it's do, a new yeah. Spell. Exactly. Like a red flag. Yup, it's, it's molten. Molten, molten Collapse. That's a clean answer. And, like a um, clean answer to a lot of stuff. Yeah, I gotta it's be honest with you, like, I could also see maybe, like, a, a, um, a Meltdown, maybe? Meltdown X1? Mm -hmm. That also kills yeah. a Dreadnought, potentially. Yeah. 
And the torpor orb. <laughs> and the torpor orb. <laughs> because like, you, you know, cool. like, right? Because like, if, if there is no Dreadnought on JPA's side, like the other creatures are kind of underwhelming, I think. This is an interesting day, right? So your opponent goes turn one Dragon Ray Chandler and you go turn one Wasteland. You know, the number of times I've done that, so many times. Because it's like, it's like if you just look at it, it's a bad play, right? You, your opponent is ahead on board and you Wasteland them. But a lot of the time I just feel like that's my only chance to win. Hoping that they get mana screwed. And it seems like a lot of players do the same. Because I saw Yu Yu Bean, he did the same uh, when I watched some coverage uh, of that le European Legacy um, Eternal Weekend that he won. He did exactly the same. So his opponent went turn one Dragon Ray Chandler and he has to go waste them. I just waste them. Um, yeah. Yeah, because I mean, sometimes you can get a little lucky and. Uh... Oh. Now, you know. now comes my actual package. Sorry, I'll be back in one minute. Sir. I hope <laughs> I'll get to see the end. It's all good, but yeah, it's it's kind of a risky play. I see it every now and then. I also tend to do it. Um, and like, it doesn't happen every time, but the Dragon's Rage Chandler, especially, like, it needs you need to you need to cast spells yeah. right to to make Dragon's Rage Chandler good. So um, if you cut them off mana and if they don't draw a land for one or two turns i mean that lit ki yes. kind of deals with dragon's way chandler too because it doesn't they don't get any value out of out of it and it's just a one one you know it's like nimble mongoose but worse yeah i think the difference here is your opponent has dragon ray chandler and M mistress vogel oh, on turn one right so you I think it's yeah. unlikely that like their hand is probably stacked So now you're you're facing two. Uh, this is like the dream Delver. Turn turn one one drop. Turn two one drop. Yeah, dude. I, I think like now you can't. You definitely cannot wasteland anymore. <laughs> you, you gotta no. do. You gotta do something else now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Pris that's a good prismatic play. ending, dude. Like I haven't seen prismatic ending in. in in a while. No. In a while. And I thought I would never ever say that because Prismatic Ending is such a good removal, like a clean removal spell. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think part of the reason why I think Lance is pretty well positioned now is because Prismatic Ending is not played. Ah. Oh. Like, and there's a lot of discard. So something like Mox Diamond is just so good now because you know you can just cast it on turn one. And it will stay in play. Like before, you had to wait with your mocks in hand uh, because you didn't want it to get killed by, by ending. But now it's kind of uh, just empty your hand and let them discard life on the loam. Yeah, good point, good point. Okay. What's going on here? Like, like so JPA, yeah, life. JPA has definitely stabilized a little bit here. Like it's yeah. still on a lot of life. Both players two mm -hmm. two lands in play after like hev heavy wasteland actions on both sides. Yeah. Oh, oh mama. Is it gonna be a stifle? Arr! <laughs> Dude, I love that. Okay. I love that. It was a trap. It was a trap. He had another. One. Like, like, did both players like add, like did they keep like five lands or something in their opening hands? Like they've been making yeah. land drops every single turn without yeah. casting many yeah. cantrips, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this Delver has been lazy. I think it's like should have flipped three turns ago, probably. Uh huh. I mean, here's so, also like the question, to, you know, also for, up to you, chat. You know, like what. Like what? Like what do you think is better? Like Delve of Secrets or that new Stalactite um, goblin? Stalker. I don't need Stalker. Yeah, that got new goblin with Manis and um, a lot of other text. I mean, with this draw, that one would have been like a ten. <laughs> 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 with all the wastelands, the fetches. And <laughs> what do you think? 
Um, you played against it. So I played it against it yesterday on stream for the very first time. I, I gotta be honest, like I didn't know that the card existed. I played for it for the very first time and I almost used a removal spell on it, but it was not needed because uh, I had so much more pressure. And I, I had a Devil of Secrets and my Devil of Secrets was faster than the, the mm. Stalactite um, Stalker. So. Raid, raid, raid. Thanks for I mean, the raid. I, mean, I also played against it a few times. It hasn't done much. Yeah. I think, I think also like Delver being blue must matter. Oh, dude, one hundred percent. At this point, like you know, like most of the most of the creatures in Delva are not even blue, so you can't even pitch them for the force of blue. And yeah, yo, yeah. what up, Nadi's MTG? Thank you so much for the raid. What's going on, everyone? I hope you have a wonderful time. What's popping? What is popping? I'm here with Ali from MTGO, and uh, we are doing a, a crazy one today. All right. So you see, JPA ninety three versus BNU. Those two are the most successful Magic Online players from 2023 and we have a direct showdown between those two guys um, called Lord of Legacy and uh, we are in the, f the second match basically. Is that correct, Ali? Did I say, did I, did yeah. I, did I, did I say something correct, wrong? Yeah. <laughs> nope, that is correct. We have, uh, we're gonna determine who is the most successful online player from last, or online challenge player from last year. That's, that's them right. And right now, APA 93 won the first match. He won the first game of the second match. It's best of three matches, so if he wins this, it's, it's done. Uh, and this is game two. Binu is playing Grixis Delver against this... I wouldn't call it Brew, but it's a funky deck. It has main deck, Torpor Orbs, uh, together with Phyrexian Dreadnought. It's like a stifle knot deck, a three color one. Is I mean I haven't seen it, to be honest. I, I've usually seen like blue. Is it blue red? You play stifle knot, at least back in the days. Uh, but band, I don't think I've seen. I mean it makes a lot of sense if you do dress down and you can also play euro. I actually haven't seen. I don't know if Jonathan plays euro. If that's just me thinking. But... <coughs> Oh yeah, dude, 100%. Like it's 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 kind of hard like you it's kind of hard to sideboard against like this this kind of deck, right? Yeah. But what I've seen earlier is that like, you definitely got to rewatch the watch though later but, but um in the first half of this match like we saw Jonathan like uh, Jonathan Angelascu with this deck um playing against the Reanimator deck, right? And Re yeah, Reanimator we thought had like a re reasonable wow. shot, but it didn't look like you that in the side post sideboard games. Mm hmm. So now, I think Binu is finally running out of land. But Jonathan is running out of life. So, also, has, is it five for a hand? Seven now. Yeah. Maybe this is like, like the maybe this is like the weak point in in JPA's deck. Is that like none of his creatures fly? I think. Yeah, I mean the Dreadnought will not win this race, right? So exactly, Euro would if he played that, but I don't think he plays Euro actually. I think it's maybe he doesn't. Okay, this is like a super critical source of plowshares. Yeah. Oh my oh, god, wow. this triple force! Are you kidding me? <laughs> I mean, it all comes down oh to the Stelva. Oh my god, oh my god, and now Jonathan can't fetch. <gasps> no, and Wait. she loses his Tundra too? Yeah, oh my god. This is insane! Yeah. This is insane! Oh my god. Yep. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah be deck. Oh my goodness, what a oh crazy god. game! Damn, everyone make some noise for Devil of Secrets. I'm gonna tell you, this guy's not fucking around. It just <laughs> double stone rain JPA's Misty Rain Forests. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Oh my and dude, God. like, I, I I bet five bucks that JPA probably had another sorts of plowshares in hand or some, maybe some other removals. Yeah, Actually, that's not even true. That's not even true. That He, he could have played it maybe before the Delva attack. But... Yeah. Maybe a couple of cantrips or some more action, right? Damn, was that a close yeah. one? 
Right, so now we're game three then, so... Oh wow, yeah, that was a good one. This is, I think, why I can't play Delver, because I can never win these games. <laughs> it was like one of the closest games ever, right? Like, there was literally only the Delver yeah. Secrets in play, no lands, and yeah, it was... This, it... this is the one, like, the games where, where you have to win with, like, zero cards in hand and one, one Delver in play, no lands. Those are the ones where only the masters, I think, win. Like where you need to understand, okay, from this point on, I just gonna like protect the queen and and just yeah. I tried playing Delver a few times, and I I mean, I could win the easy games. I had like you know wasteland days and all that stuff, but mm -hmm. these ones were thin margins. I think uh, those are hard. I mean, this is and this, is, this is like already a tricky situation, right? Like we know JPA has like almost the, f I think the full playset of Stifles in his deck. Yeah, must and Bini going yeah. like you know Missy Rainforest go Delta go. Yeah, this is already kind of awkward. And I th and Bini wants yeah. to be like Bini wants to be oh, aggressive wow. here, I think, because like he's yeah. he's the he's the Delva deck. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. And like the way Jonathan sequence is obviously a stifle, right? For island go. At least you signal that you have stifle. Maybe it doesn't, but. Now when you have three fetches, you might as well just get the stifle out of them. Yeah. Like like some something that you know a lot of smart people do is uh crack fetch lands during your opponent's upkeep, for example, right? Yeah. That's like something like, you know. You um be basically grew up with, I think back then. Yeah, <laughs> it's like the rule number one. Oh, life. my favorite card goes into. <laughs> oh damn! <laughs> but see that like the, the, like this is like the, this is a hundred percent. This is basically just writing it down on your forehead. I literally have double stifle in my hand. I'm not gonna play my loam here. Uh, yeah. I I'd rather go to this card <laughs> step here. <laughs> yeah. So if there's not a Euro in this deck, with Loam to dra like... We're gonna look at the deck list afterwards. Yep. So uh, welcome ladies and gentlemen, this is- it's turn 4 and we saw the first spell in this game, which was Ambitious Bauble, which didn't even... got activated, so... <laughs> it's like the- that's like the slowest game possible. Yeah. Kind of the so. opposite of the first game. Or the previous game, maybe. <laughs> So I guess the slow game must favor Jonathan. I, I agree. I tend to agree. Also, the it's a bit light on lands though, I, but it also life from the low. Another like we when you talk about playing around the life. Another, another thing I've seen is that if you have Make plus the storm, you would wait until your opponent like brainstorms, then you fetch, uh, and then they stifle, and then you can get both spells. Yeah. With the plus the yeah, JPA yeah. going to another cleanup step here. Okay. That, oh, that was Euro. I told you he played Euro. Damn. I haven't in what is it like five max five games? Never saw that one. Is it there? It would be fun if B new stifled there. Also at this point I wanna say thank you to all everyone who just tuned in. To the stream and um, all the new follows and uh, subs and all that, I really appreciate it. I'm um, super, I'm super happy to be here with um, with Ali. You know, just covering all the all the good magic that's happening on stream right now, and I'm so happy to share it with you guys. Um, welcome, welcome, you guys. To me, humans. Oh, what a weird game. The so Delver deck has played nothing. Five lands. Mhm. Mm nothing. And the uh, and the brew deck or stifle deck has well not that much either, but oh, it's... I mean the, the 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 clock's kind of ticking, right? Like Bidu has not cast much, like I mean the the mission bubble and the brainstorm now, but there is this time clock on uh, on him because there is an Uro in JPA's yeah. yard. 
And unless Binu has some surgical ex um, extraction effect, which I don't even know if he has any in the deck, mm -hmm. he might be in trouble, right? Like, the, the long game is not going to favor him by any no. means. Like, he's going to top deck those um, Delve of Secrets and Dragon's Way channels and dazes while JPA mm -hmm. has all the time in the world to get a Torpo Orb, maybe find a Dreadnought. Like, he, like his deck is somewhat of a combo deck, right? Like, it, he, he needs the the uh, torpo orb effects and he needs a, um the dreadnought right but even if it doesn't yeah, if it, even if it doesn't work follow. out like he still has the uro so um yeah yo zebi won yeah i agree I, I think the way this game played out jonathan must be immensely favored though yeah i think like the only like the only way jpa can lose from this spot is maybe if um if for some reason if he gets like wastelanded out of the game like if he if he's like really stuck on mana while yeah. being you can resolve maybe like a murktide regent or two maybe you know but how could that happen now because he has life from the loan right he's gonna get, like you, you have to you like, have to f yeah you have to keep forcing it force i don't it. know <laughs> Like, Maybe force of negation. Yeah, I mean, you, like you are the master of all this, right? But I, I imagine like people do yeah. insane stuff for uh, versus force of, uh, versus life from the loam. Like I've cast so many force of wills actually on life from the loam for like two, three turns, just to kind of like mm -hmm. buy more time. That one, that yeah, but that usually only works if you have like a delver in play, or like exactly. Yeah, and you need you, you need some don't pressure. Do anything. Yeah. Yeah. But then, of course, you can force it and then surgical. Uh, but that, yeah, that, that would work. Yeah. Like, then you B wait like, three cards on this. Seriously. I think, like, Binu needs, like, two surgicals right now. Like, he needs one for the Uro and he needs one for the Loam. Yeah. Because, or again, like. Or will and, like, a um, Spell Bomb or a. Uh, the thing is, I wonder if he actually brought in Graveyard Hate because I wouldn't. It like, the way. So this is the fifth game he plays against his deck, right? Yeah. He hasn't seen Euro in any of the other games. He hasn't seen Life from the Loam either, so... I wonder if... If, if I were on the Beanie side, if I would even bring in, like, Graveyard Hate, but... Oh, dude, yeah, 100%. Like, imagine if you have your Surgical Extraction and, and JPA goes like, Yeah, okay, that's my Torpo Orb and my, dr uh, my Frexton Dreadnought, yeah. go. And you have your yeah, yeah, and yeah. you have your stinky Surgical Extraction, knowing that <laughs> it will probably not do anything for the rest of the game. Like that's, yeah. I mean that's just good deck building, right? Like like you force your opponents yeah. to kind of bring in really bad cards versus your deck, just to sidestep them. Oh, oh my goodness, dude! Double days. Yeah, why not? I mean, double days is not too bad because you get two lands that you can brainstorm away. What no? Yeah, I like I, I like that a lot. Yeah. yeah. Also, Binu needs to, like, he's playing a Murktide region deck, right? Like, he needs to put stuff yeah. in his yard. I think this was a very, very nice sequence. But now, you can get the lands back on top. Uh... Yeah, and then, what, you can untap with the Murktide and hope that will win? I mean, that could, right? If, if you have, like, an 8-8. Eight, eight. Yeah. That's possible. Like you could also, yeah, because... yeah. Like if if you could maybe find a wasteland and wasteland that savanna, for example, yeah. and then uh, and maybe days the, the life, the next life from the loan while yeah. playing yeah, Murkite yeah, regions, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. It could happen. I guess. And like see. he and he's also so been like so patient with his mischievous baubles, like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like that got played like what like ten minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. Play, play around stifle. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, <laughs> let's see if there's like Amazing. some clock here. There's no creature, huh? Oh, Jonathan so I'm, 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 I'm sorry, this was JPA's turn. All right. Yes, so a wasteland would actually be very good. But you need another days as well. Mm -hmm. Marktide, Marktide wasteland, that would be insane, actually. Okay, well, wow. All right, so we turned the. Uh, oh my god. I mean, this this kind of counts like Murktide Regent, right? Yeah, 
There's no wasteland though, so... Okay, so why do you think he didn't dredge there? I would have... Like... Yeah, that's interesting. I, I, I thought that JPA was, was stuck on mana, so like, he, he probably... Yeah. Take the life from the loan, but nope. I guess you, you could have maybe hoped f to just naturally draw a fetch land and then you can escape Uro. Mm -hmm. But that sounds like such a that such a true. big gamble to me. Yeah, if you feel that you're under a lot of pressure, because you can take nine damage next turn, right? Potentially, definitely. Yeah, like what's what's missing? So like. He has what? Inst oh, instant land and artifact in the yard. Yeah, just like one more type, any sorcery, any creature in the yard, any enchantment. Yeah. Or yeah. plane, or plane spoker. <laughs> I think. I mean, usually if your Delver opponent has two channelers, you're gonna assume that they're gonna be uh, tree trees by next turn. Oh yeah, they're gonna pop off. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, but. I wonder why it's interesting. I wonder what Jonathan is. Is he hoping to like get the stifle and the dreadnought? That wouldn't even do it, right? It's not gonna raise. Like if if these things pop off next turn. Uh. Hey, oh okay. All Look right. The yeah, they got it. Delirious. <laughs> Yeah. There you you go. actually you actually increase the clock, okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so Jonathan said I'm not gonna. So now I think Jonathan is in a great shape again. Yeah, this was not a bad turn for him. Like he got he got oh. rid of most of the pressure. And yeah. again, you know, like, let's don't forget there's still this Uro in the graveyard, right? And, like, this is, yeah. like, the game got to a point where both players have a lot of mana sources. There were not a lot of wastelands. I think there was, like, zero waste. Oh, it was a single wasteland, I think, uh, involved in this game. But yeah. like, if both players have a lot of mana, that usually doesn't favor the Delva deck. No. I think Binu made some really cool days to play with days there. Uh, I think he played really well. I mean, it's not over. Maybe here, oh yeah, here comes the Murktai region, so it's definitely not over. Oh, that's a big boy. This is like one force of will from winning, right? If you, yeah, if you can force this Euro. Rick Proctor, what? what? Oh, that's flying. Oh, he did not escape the Uro. That's interesting. Strict Proctor has flying. Didn't know that. Oh, shit, yeah. That's insane. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, that is nice. Not gonna lie. Oh, my goodness. Okay, oh double. Alright, so we are not even trying to be controlled. We, we're just gonna race them. <laughs> Yeah. That's cool. I can definitely appreciate that. You know, I was thinking like, why would you want to go strict Proctor first? Because that is so bad if you want to escape Uro after, right? Because yeah. all, 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 the, all the positive triggers from Uro also get countered. But I guess like double Dreadnought is like a different story. So if if these Delver flips to say a Lightning Bolt, and you bolt the Proctor, then you attack. Uh, that's not lethal, right? Nope. You need double lightning bolt. Double lightning bolt would do it. Okay. Still no, still no flips. Yeah, those dude, those Delvers have been really lazy. Yeah. I think uh, this for is your Meltdown. Meltdown on one. Yay. Oh, dude, hundred percent. Yeah, like Meltdown would be an absolute meltdown for <laughs> in this yeah. game. Um. <laughs> Oh, it is. Oh, it is oh. the meltdown! Oh my goodness! it is the meltdown! This is savage, oh, dude. This is sa oh, this is <laughs> yeah. so good. Oh my goodness! Because oh, again, oh. we talked about this already, chat. But the yeah. strict proctor does counter all ETB triggers unless the controller pays an extra two, 
Uro has an ETB trigger, which is uh, really juicy. Yeah. Actually, this Proctor is actually not gonna, it's gonna be worse now, because Euro is not gonna gain. Yeah. Yeah. It's, Dude, that fella. You don't want it when you escape. That fella stays the vanilla for now. And uh, talking about numbers, right? Oh my goodness. Yeah. So if these Delvers can just flip, game is over, right? Uh. Yeah, like this is like this is like the saddest Uro I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Do you think it was too aggressive to play both? Uh oh it flipped for what? Malt okay, so this game's I think unless Jonathan has something up his sleeve. Yeah, okay. Oh my wow. goodness. And Binu wins the match. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I did honestly I did not expect this to happen. This was a super super close game. Um for you know for some time, I think before Binu played like when both players made a lot a lot of land traps, I thought that JPA was like heavily, heavily an advantage uh, in this game, but it turned out, you know, those uh those Delvers and Murkhead regions they, they just don't fuck around, you know, they, they hit hard yeah. and the Uro did not a good Uro appearance, I want to say in this game, it was like the saddest Uro on earth and that meltdown the, the, the dude, like, yeah. like, like we talked about meltdown, right, like in, during sideboarding, like yeah. that's not a bad idea, that's actually not a bad idea to bring in meltdown. No, it was quite fantastic, yeah. So we're gonna get see Jonathan most likely on his signature deck, don't you think? I think so. So for everyone who like um both players have submitted two legacy deck lists, Binu already um lost his uh with enough of his reanimated deck, so he can't pick that anymore. He has to go stick around with his Grixis Silver deck, right? And JPA yeah. gets to pick a secondary deck, uh, which is gonna be Probably sneak and show. We will we will see about that. JPA yeah. is obviously known as a sneak and show master, and uh, he's been playing the deck for such a long time at this point that it would really surprise me if he um, took like something else. Yep. Oh. So this is the decider. Whoever wins this match w wins the L Lord of Legacy. And yep. Twenty three. So. And I got I got to show it again in the camera. This is the special prize for the. For the Lord of Legacy, there's like a special. Like I did like the special alteration for the, for the champ. It's the one ring with a special alteration on it, and the second place gets this Sartorix Orc Army, saying like Lord of Legacy second. Um, so we're gonna have a lot of you know both players are gonna be really happy about them hopefully, and um, we all get to see a lot of good magic. So um, you know it's like a win-win situation for everyone. Yeah, it's gonna be so cool. It's gonna be so cool to. Um, because this is like a true unique thing, right? There will only be one copy of this. Uh, so let's, um... Oh, oh, dude, what's up with that? Max. Like, 7th edition islands? Dude, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Here comes the Bone Masters, probably. So... In the olden days, when Sneak and Show played, um... Gristlebrand. This would have been really rough. But now, I think they don't play... Um, I don't think actually they play even a single Gristle brand in Sneaker Show. Yeah, I don't it's, know. it's kind of a meta a meta game call, right? <clears throat> At this point. Um, mm -hmm. Like Atroxa basically, but Atroxa is the new Gristle brand that sidesteps Bowmaster. Man, like it, it must be so devastating if you go like... Draw seven with your wrestler brand and your opponent goes like bow master. That's like fourteen points of damage. Hmm. Can I ask you why do you start with Veil of Summer? This is rough. Like it can mean a couple of things, right? Like Thanks this could like subs. this could be like you know, um if you have a force of will, like you better cast it right now. It could be a bait. Maybe JPA doesn't even have the combo. But if the combo player goes Veil of Summer, like the Binu has two options, right? Like, if Binu has two counter spells, let's say, like, a 
double force of will, for example, with double pitch, then um, he basically has to force this Veil of Summer, right? Because otherwise, like, maybe JPA goes Ancient Tomb, show and tell. Mm. But maybe JPA doesn't have that, and he just simply wants to, you know, just, just like, basically make Binyu waste one of his force of wills, even though he um, JPA ha does not have any combo ready. Yeah, but I don't understand because if you, if you have, if you have the show and tell, isn't it better? Oh, maybe it's better against days. Like, yeah, yeah, that's if, a, that's a good if question. If you have the show and tell, like, why don't you just cast it and then you can cast Veil of Summer? The only thing I guess is if your opponent has days, right? Because if it has force, doesn't matter. Yeah, it does not matter. I'll be kind of, I'll be kind of, oof, that was a quick one. Whoa. That was a quick one. <laughs> like, I gotta, I gotta tell you, like, every, every time, like, my, my combo opponents go, like, Veil of Summer first, I, dude, I'm, I'm terrified, right? Like, yeah. I'm like, I'm, you know, I used to play Storm back, way back. Uh, yeah. Silent in the main deck. And, and I, sometimes, like, if I had eight cards in hand, I just went with started silence just to you know bait the force but um the good players they never the good players did what we knew did they just let it let it restall um well maybe it depends on what turn but like sometimes i would go like turn one st uh, silence just to bait something <laughs> God damn it. and like bad players you would see them start shaking and and you know you instantly knew what they were yeah what seriously they were like do. it's it's rough man right like imagine if you if you have like forcible and pitch but then your second count is maybe just a daze maybe mm -hmm. it's so rough right like like do, do you daze the veil of summer or do you force it or do you maybe just don't do anything like sometimes it's okay <laughs> like like imagine if if uh being you had a daze um mm -hmm. like jpa did not have the mana to to pay for the days in his combo turn right because like he went mm -hmm. tropical island for veil of summer and then had, he had exactly three mana for show and tell mm -hmm. so days would have been a lethal counter here yeah yeah so i think the reason jonathan started with whale was to not show that he was weak to days right because he was yeah when he when he no actually not because he played the land right he played a land. No, he didn't. He, he didn't. Fetched. He did not play a land. Yeah, that that that's that's yeah, the okay. thing, right? And if if he I was control... signaling, I have ancient tomb in my hand. Right. right that, that, that that's a that's a tricky part, right? Like like what's the yeah? And this is like something like a lot of storm players also do is like they, they play a dress or they, they play some spells even before making their land drop sometimes, uh, which makes it a little harder for you um you know for the opponent to evaluate like how important those um those spells are right like yeah. is, is the is the is a land drop going to be actually a, a land that taps for black for example for another dark which or is it going to be like a red land for past and flames or you know green for paradise lost you know there are like so many options mm -hmm. ready and like if you don't show your opponent the cards you have in your hand like it's gonna it's gonna make it like really tough it's very tight games right like we're gonna it's two one bo both matches let's see what happens here but wait who do you think is favorite in Greek versus you can show <laughs> like this no is like idea. an old this is like an old classic right Ali like um, um Delva versus sneak and show is I think this yeah. match has been around for how many years now <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like one of the old classics I think the yeah. first, but the first time when I got introduced to Legacy, um, the most common Delva deck was Canadian Threshold, yeah. um, and that deck had a lot of more counters than the Delva decks mm. these days. Like it had like multiple spell pierce, um, yeah, spell snare, stifle. which didn't really do much, but stifle too. And the Delva decks these days, they are more aggressive. The creatures are way better than than uh, like ten years ago. Yeah, but you also don't play many counters right like it's force will days and that's kind of it in the sideboard you have a lot a little more juice like power blast and counter balance maybe yeah, or flash storms must be pretty good 
Even Hydro Blast can be okay, I guess. I don't know if, if even Sneak and Show is... It's like a plan post sideboard. Probably is. Oh yeah, dude, 100%. <laughs> Plus, <laughs> like the Orkish Bowmaster... Like, it, it looks kind of decent yeah. versus Sneak and Show, but I, I don't think it, it, it is really that good versus it. No. Because, like, un unless unless JPA plays, oh, like, a, wow. a Ponda or Brainstorm, it's just, like, a, it's just kind of like a Grizzly Bear. Like a two mana, two power. Yeah. Ben's Grid. That's a Storm card. Good card. Yeah, it's a good card, yeah. But Binu can pay for... So, yeah, so you can pay for one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that that's what that's what that was uh, what people always forget, right? Like you can actually pay for defense crit. It's not a <laughs> yeah. it's not a silence effect, you know. It it just no. life's a little life's rough, but you you can still uh, pay. It's like heavy taxes on top of your yeah. force of will pitch cost, you know. <laughs> it's yeah. force of will is literally like three mana exile card from your hand, lose one life. It's a it's a terrible it's a terrible exchange. I gotta tell you. Yeah. Except that if the spell would have won your opponent the game, then then it's a pretty brilliant one. Mm hmm But I actually think Force of Will is gonna be better and better in Legacy. Don't you think? Like it kind of scales with the power level of the cards. Oh, dude, yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean that 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 that's why Modern is such a like Modern tends to be. A really frustrating format every now and then because there is no force of will, yeah. right? And and a lot a lot of shit just happens, you know. A lot of things just simply resolve. <laughs> yeah. There's also no wasteland in modern, which I also think is, yeah. is, is a huge huge part. People get away with their greediest mana bases, and that's just not okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I mean, if, if they had wasteland, maybe I should have, maybe I would have played modern actually. They have Brendan sticks and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's also crucible. I like you. You can go really hard on yeah, on people's yeah. mana bases. All right. Well, you know what I'm thinking? I, I'm th yeah. yeah, I'm thinking Binu is has probably like two options, right? Like he can either hold up force of will. He probably has a counter in his hand. Um, mm -hmm. or he's debating if he wants to play something like a Murktide Regent, but then he can't actually counter it. A spell, right? Yeah. Okay. Is the game over here? So there's like a Pyroblast. Four mana Pyroblast, yeah. Nice. Defense Grid. What a magic card. What a magic card. Yeah. Oh my That's goodness. That's it, probably. Yeah, Binu can't, like, Binu can't cause anything. Binu Unless Binu puts in like the Archon from his reanimated. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you were right. It was the Murktide Regent or the four mana Pyroblast. Right. I don't know. So no, this is not I this is not completely disastrous because um, Binu can still untap and Pyroblast the Atroxa. Atroxa is has no, this it's like not red. Oh, it's, it's blue though, so, so they can Pyroblast oh, it. Oh, sorry, it's blue. Yeah, yeah, sorry. It's, it's yeah, blue. so that's like the yeah. heavy downside of a, of just a creature mm. being full color is that you can easily yeah. blast it, like either blue blast or red blast it. In this case, it's... It's, it's true because Jonathan can protect it, right? Exactly, yeah. If, if it's uh, Binu's turn, like Binu can do the, oh. anything he wants. Binu lost connection, oh no. Oh yeah, I think that Atroxa got, probably was like way too much for his mental health. <laughs> oh, okay, let me see in the chat if we lost some. Uh... But yeah, meanwhile, our chat, what do you, what do you think about Atroxa versus Crystal Brand? You know, or versus. There's been so many different types of creatures you can you can cheat in the play with, uh, with show and tell. Like there's Amber Cool, Crystal Brand, Atroxa. Sometimes you see Archon of Cruelty. There are just there are just so so many these days, and I just wonder like like what like what's the best one, and how do you properly you know pick your seven or eight um, show and tell targets? Because again, the options are there. I think at the last at the no at at the one of the God of Legacies. I think last year we even saw 
um an Itali, not not the the primal, um the six mana one. It was the, the new Itali, and the red one, which has like a green ability, like the Gruel one. I think the card was uh, like from, from March of Machines, maybe. Oh no, it's okay. I think so what like does it do? yeah, I think like we got BNU back on the game. That's awesome. Nice, yeah. Primal Sickness, that's the one. Can I, uh, can I ask, do you think it was right to put in Merktide? I think so, like, probably, because you, you want to free up a lot of mana, right? Like, it's probably yeah, certain. No. So, like, JPA revealed Ancient Tomb, Sneak Attack, Ember Cool, Leon Storm, Veil of Summer, Atroxa, oh Grand God. Unifier, Scalding Tarn, another Scalding Tarn, Fluster Storm, and Sneak Attack, and Brainstorm, and Lotus Petal. So, oh, okay. that's a lot of business. There's a lot of business. <laughs> that's a lot of business. <laughs> and the defense grid is there. There it is. Just staring at you and say, uh, So, what's going on now? I mean. And JPA chooses yeah, Sneak Attack, Lotus Petal, Ember Cool, the Aeon Storm, Ancient Tomb, and Fluster Storm. So, it's, it's basically a Fluster Storm and defense grid protected. Sneak attack plus activation for Ember Cool. As yeah. this, this, this is gonna hurt. This is gonna hurt really badly in, a, in in just a few moments, I think. And the only good what news for for Bunu is that he gets to basically do whatever the hell he wants in this turn because there's still the defense grid and JPI yeah. can't stop so, Bunu from doing if, anything. So if I were Bunu, I would like fetch Taiga, cast Choke. <laughs> even, <laughs> even that wouldn't. Yeah, I guess a choke would actually. A choke would be good. A choke would be alright. <laughs> yeah, it would be alright, yeah. But otherwise, it looks really grim, I think. Like, Pithing Needle is also. Like, Pyroblast into Pithing Needle. Yeah. But Plus, I, I there is still this. Okay. Nasty Atroxa on the board already. Yeah, but Pyroblast attracts uh, them, them pitting, you know. And we see a GG! We have a winner, yeah. Congratulations, wow. Wow, 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 wow. That's insane. JPA just takes it down with the signature deck, sneak and show. Like, I'm not even surprised, no. honestly. Like, <laughs> why am I not no. surprised by this? <laughs> Yeah, so it was two, 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 oh in the in the final game, right? Yep. It's just sneak and show crushing Delver. Yeah. That was wow. that was awesome. All right, yeah, so really, really good. Yeah, so for so for everyone again, uh, this was the Lord of Legacy um, showdown between JPA ninety three and Binu. Those two were the most successful Magic Online players in two thousand twenty three, with JPA having the most. Um, Legacy Challenge top eights and Binu had the highest win rate, um, with yeah. almost uh, eight, eighty percent, which is which is insane. And um, yep. we just had the craziest matches, meaning uh, also uh, meaning that those two cards are gonna find their new homes, right? So the oops, this one, the lo uh, the Amazing. one ring altered uh, to Lord of Legacy two thousand and twenty three. This goes to JPA. Congratulations. Make some noise, everyone. So amazing. Thank you so much, Kai, for helping organizing this. We'll uh, sort out their addresses so you can send it to them. Uh, and thanks, everyone, for watching. I think I'm going to go and, and make, put my kids to bed. But uh, that, that sounds awesome, dude. It's really, really fun. That sounds really, really good. All right. Take it easy, right, dude. Thank you. I, Cheers. Yo. Cheers. And I will try to see if someone else is streaming right now so I can boost you guys over to that. If you liked what you saw, also give um, Ali a follow on Twitter. It's um, Ali on MTG Online or and Ali Lindlum. And um, you can also find me, Sawatarix, Kai Sawatari on, uh, on Twitter as well. And also like Sawatarix.com where I do my homepage stuff. I'll quickly see if I can rate someone and meanwhile I'll uh, watch this. Oops. <laughs> Yo, what's up everyone? It's your boy Kai Sawatari. The new homepage is up. It's the place to add swag to your game. Check this out. You can get high quality tokens to really make your deck pop. 
magic card size, alpha cut corners, I can put mini alterations on top and they're all based on my art. Would you like to spice up your deck with some handcrafted alterations or want to get a custom proxy card or maybe a hand-drawn token? It's finally all in one place. Savatarix.com All right, so I'm gonna shoot you over to Doomwake. He's uh, he is also streaming some magic. Thank you so much for tuning in, everyone. I ha I hope you had a good good time. Uh, it was a little short notice, but uh, it was super super fun to uh, see some high stakes magic. It was truly competitive. I learned a lot today, and I hope you guys did the same experience. All right, so I will be back tomorrow morning for another stream. Tomorrow morning I will be streaming Paper Legacy. Um, it's the Berlin Legacy weekend, and I will feature all my matches all right until then take it sleazy and have some good time with doomboy cheers everyone